Hey there, beloved Ascension Pioneers. I would like to read you something I wrote today. I just came back from my lovely walk in nature and I decided to read you something I wrote today. Many of you maybe already read it, but I want to share because later on I want to discuss this. It's a very important thing that's happening on the planet right now with all of us. You know, I was just, <laughs> I was just told by an astrologer that I totally nailed it, what's happening. And I have an astrologer friend here in Slovenia as well. And she always says that I don't even need to need a to know astrology because I always say everything right to the point through my inner knowing and that's that's my gift because I just I just see things you know I just observe I observe things and I'm tuned into source energy and I know what's happening and I see it through a lot of my own examples and I see it in interactions of many individuals as well so let me start with reading this and I'll discuss this with all of you later Saturn has now deeply anchored its position in Scorpio this happened on October 5th I think where it will have its roots for about two years. I'm not an astrologer, no, but I do know that Scorpio represents the deepest of depths, the underworld, so the so-called shadow, the subconscious, so the shadow aspects of the personality that need to be looked into. This is a call for many who have not yet embraced their shadow to step into their true power as one can only do that by fully embracing the totality of their being, the shadow and the light to enter wholeness and completion of their divine nature, which is basically our Christ itself, our Christed essence. There are also other powerful alignments and cosmic triggers that serve the divine plan of perfection and we all operate within the same plan. And it's true, we're part of the same cosmic matrix. Also, if you're getting to see uh, my video, it was called Embracing Your Shadow, I think. You can also watch that if you have missed it. It was a while back, I think. Naturally, this process has already begun for many, and we've been going through this a lot. And especially those who have been doing conscious self-awareness work. That's natural, so you can seldomly call it work, you know, you can call it the natural process. Those are now coming into their spotlight as pioneers and way showers. They are serving in, as neutral observers who are here to shed compassion and unconditional love, which can of course only come from higher understanding. Everyone else is going to experience great unveiling, which might even be painful at times. This is because many are still in self-denial, lying to themselves about many aspects of their lives, which is usually mirrored in their relationships, occupations, and circumstances in their life. And our external reality is always mirroring what needs to be still recognized and embraced. It's never about the others. It's never about the external. This period will be about discovering our true authenticity and fully living it. This sometimes intimidating or painful process is naturally serving the greater awakening as these are still many personality imposed limitations. So they need to come to surface for us to really see where we still put limits through our personality and where our being really needs to shine through. So through this great unveiling period we are now entering, many shall keep on dying in order to be reborn again and again. Because everything that we are not and all that is still within the illusion needs to go. Like, bye-bye, you know, <laughs> for good. Note that there is much chaos in the world right now and this is all how things appear to be in the external reality as they continue to resolve in order for the inner to match the outer. Because you have a lot of individuals whose external reality does not yet match their inner. And this is the process that's happening right now. A lot of individuals will try to create even more drama. You know, maybe that will give them the false illusion of resolving something, which is never true. And sometimes they will even consciously or subconsciously wish to pull others in their own drama. But remember, you are to stay neutral for this is their own drama to be resolved. Whenever you are not a neutral observer, you can easily be sucked into someone else's karma, so in their own story, which you're not a part of. So be careful where you entangle yourself, okay, beloved pioneers? Know that this is their own learning process and they need to work it out for themselves. We serve the truth the most when we remain a compassionate observer. We just need to stay in our own truth, which is our own empowerment vortex, and this alone makes the shift happen. And it's true, you got to trust the process. When you will have the need to, to, assist, to assist someone or to, you know, the need to be pulled into their awareness through something that is coming still from the lower, you'll be very easily to lose your ground in the grounded vortex space that you are 
and neutrality. So be careful of that, okay? Be an objective observer, not just of others, first through yourself. Remember, you are a pioneer who is here to serve the divine truth, not the human ego. So don't allow yourself to be pulled into people's games. Sometimes, you know, even people who write to me, you know, please speak about, about this, you know. And yeah, sometimes I admire, you know, recommendations or suggestions, but it's very different energy when someone tells you what to do something or you could do it like this. No, you know, this is not a suggestion anymore. When the moment you say you could do it like this, it's already you imposing your own belief system upon anyone else. And trust me, I'm guided by spirit and I would never allow the human ego to interfere because I came here to serve the truth. And I'm here to speak the truth. This is my main purpose here on earth. So that's how I know. And that's why many people feel my power and they step fully into their own power because we touch each other's lives through our energy. And one person's vortex will, you know, suck another person into that vortex, but not in a dramatic way, because this is different than when someone is not neutral. For instance, when you're neutral, when you're love, you can easily suck someone into that vibration, which is good, because they are also that in truth. But when you're being your false self, when you operate within the shadow, um, still, you know, some people have strong shadow because they have not yet faced it. They live their shadow more than their light, which is okay. You know, it's serving the divine plan and nothing is to be judged, you know, because the moment you judge the dark, what you do, you become it, you step into it. I've been talking about this with my mom on my walk today. I said, um, you know, if you would see yourself as this being um, and you would see two polar opposites, you know, you would see shadow at one part and light in another part, and you'd be in between, and the moment you lose your neutrality, you lose your ground, you lose that center of your Christ itself, you are very easily to be drawn into either one of them. Of course, when I speak about the light, when I say your family of light or the light of the truth, I mean the original source light. At the beginning, there was light, and it meant love, and we have infinite creation. So the thing is that this is not the same light that when I talk about when the aspects of creation that you know, consists both of shadow and the light aspect. Basically, even the light can be too blinding sometimes if you're not really looking into the shadow part as well. There was a lot of beings, even angelic beings, who were not always capable of, um, you know, they were too much focused only in the light and not always their, how they operated, how they served, um, was neutral. So a lot of these um, people call them fallen. They're not fallen. They just chose to choose a certain aspect to integrate that more. And no one ever falls from grace. We're always divine. We always remain our source seed, our source potential in nature. It's how we're birthed and we never can change how we were birthed through purity of source and divine love. But it's more about than you as a being and exploring this creation is how you choose. But remember, the moment you lose that ground, the moment you lose neutrality, you step and you become that. So people who judge things that are negative, that are dark, that are so-called bad, there is, in the new awakening, in the new awareness on the path of ascension, there is no good or bad or light and dark and that kind of polarity anymore. We talk about it. We talk about it with a major detachment. It's, it's not like that anymore. You say the underworld is awakening and rising up once more, but it's in a very different sense than someone who might fear that. The moment you fear shadow, you also become it. There's a lot of people who judge negative people, negative entities on the planet, what's happening, because they don't see the bigger picture. The moment you step out of that bigger picture, because you are the bigger picture, you are divine source, you are that essence. But when you step out of it and you take this human body and you don't remember through that body as well, that higher truth, you will be experiencing all different levels of gray exploring all different aspects of either light and dark, but you will only be back to your source nature when you will fully see all integrated as one. And you will be able in this body, but also to have the consciousness, the conscious awareness of that state. A lot of people say, when is, you know, when are we entering the fifth dimension? I say, you know, who is not ready to become the fifth dimensional awareness is not gonna be there because you have to always vibrationally match the collective if you want to go with that collective if you don't you go somewhere else with another collective because there's as many collectives you know there's many slow groupings there's many decisions to be made in this infinite creation it's not so tiny that we imagine you know earth is not the only place that we can experience living lives and incarnations so 
people have the small vision about many things and they they step out of the true highest vision their true source seeing we have to start seeing with the eyes of the source with the universal mind and heart of all and the moment we do we see that basically all is one and we become neutral non-judgmental we just become a compassionate observer and therefore we don't attach either to the aspect of light which can be blinding sometimes you know the love and light movement which sometimes is really judgmental of that dark so they coexist but they kind of they kind of melt they blend in a way that is really not within that neutrality space you see so like i said we are we're not serving the human ego it's not for us to be pulled by those who still don't see the bigger picture we have to be the ones who hold the energy of the bigger picture and you see i was explaining this to my mom and she said but i'm reading that in my book you know the one i was telling you about in the shambhala and the teachings from the tibetan masters you know from james radfield the one who wrote celestine prophecy and she said, oh, you know everything. You're the same, you know, you have the same awareness. And I said, of course I do. That's why I don't read books, because I know it. And she said it was explained the exact same way that I explained it to her. And, you know, it was another confirmation that, the, you know, it's not just about knowing about this. You really have to be this. You have to be willing to face the shadow, look it right in through the eye. And see that that is the same aspect of creation, the same aspect of source. It's just in a different variation. It's just a different, it's a polar opposite in a way, but it's really not an opposite. It's a different manifestation. Something that was not yet fully illuminated by the truth. And not yet all in all creation is illuminated by truth. That's why we have different levels of, you know, uh, beingness and races um, on different planets. Some more enlightened, some less. That's why we have this variation, you see. So we are the ones who are operating within the divine will and we can always invoke it if we feel that need, you know. And um, I know that I operate within these principles of the divine and the divine will. So what is also happening? Many will also be faced with their deepest fears so that they can finally remember their true nature. For many, it won't be easy to let go of what was so familiar for all those years. Imagine, you know, someone who's really attached to something and then you need to let it go. You have to be compassionate for that person. Otherwise, you can't help them. You know, the moment you will, you will say, I feel your pain. You will become, you know, you can't feel their pain. You can just understand it from a higher purpose that they have chosen. If they, they experience pain, they have chosen so. They don't have to, but they have. And this is the law of free will. And when you have that higher vision, you respect it and you respect others. So you respect their decisions and their choices and their game. But you wish to play your own, okay? That's the biggest difference. Hmm, what did I talk about? So, um, many will be faced with these fears that they won't be able to let go. And not just uh, years of these, you know, of these fears and attachments, but eons and eons of lifetimes here on Earth. So Earth is entering a new cycle of incarnation, and so are we, if we are ready, of course, to do so. We're preparing together with our mother Gaia to enter a new paradigm, a new way of living, coexisting and co-creating with one another. And I always say, let there be only the light of the truth. So it shall be, and so it is. So my beloved pioneers, I really wanted to say that I myself sometimes, you know, when I'm just being, just living my daily life, you know, sharing my stuff, I was always this way. Um, I never really interacted with people in a way that I would invoke their friendship or I would um, kind of seek them out. It's usually people who find me and seek me out. But because I'm such a huge catalyst, because uh, I carry the essence of truth and not everyone is, of course, yet ready to look at their deepest mirrors. They're not ready because you have a lot of the people who think they're right and you think you're right and you think you're right and you think you're right and so many years you keep telling yourself that you're right that you don't even choose love to enter your heart so how can that person see things neutrally from a level of divine love which is their true essence they can't so they've lost the perspective and what we can do we, we have to hold the space of that truth i always know that i came here to this planet to just hold a vibration of truth and then my mom tells me today that in this book it says that you need to hold this vibration that we just need to keep that as many as possible need to hold a level of truth when others can't and again i'm saying well i always say that i always say that we just need to hold the space for everyone who's ready to walk into it and become that space as well 
So like I say, touch others' vortices with our own vortex. But we need to become that empowered vortex, right? It's all about us. The change comes from within. And what I notice is a lot of the people who are not yet on that level of awareness and know that. Have compassion. Don't be judgmental over anyone because they are where they are. You need to understand them. Some people are more in the infant stages, more child stages, and more mature or less mature. It doesn't matter. All it matters is that you can see it with the eyes of the soul. The eyes of source. Like I say, we need to we need to tap into source eyes and that feeling that is divine. Not our human perspective that we just categorize people, you know. Sometimes I just say to myself as well, I feel like a spiritual mother and I say, oh, these children, you know, they act out in a certain way. But it's just a perspective of humor. We need to keep that humor. It is very important for our balance. Keep the humor. See everything is a game and everyone is in the playground. They're all experiencing what they want and wish to experience for their greatest potential. So not all will see things the way you will see them. You just need to hold the space. Hold the space of that truth. So all my life, People were coming and going out of my life, seeking me out, leaving me, idolizing me, being afraid of me because of my powerful energy, then running away, sometimes literally, or just um, not being able to bear up. And um, the thing was, just this week, I got a free reading from this lovely person. I um, will, I have to recommend her. Uh, she, I promised her that I would recommend her, so I will put her link below. And she does great uh reading kind of like uh, divination from different aspects of divination and she, she wrote the same thing you know people will keep coming and going out of your life and yeah that's why I came here I didn't come here to just have a group of people just exchange with them be friends with them and that's it I came to be a trigger and there's so many of you pioneers who are also triggers of light and truth because truth is what's happening on this planet right now it's being revealed and you can see the astrology is showing that and other alignments are showing that because it is this, the time for truth to shine this planet wants to live within truth and freedom. It needs that freedom. And some of us have the opportunity to offer this, but not everyone will always take your gift. Some people will, won't even see that that's a gift. Recently, I've, I've, been, I've experienced a lot of the people who, when this transition happened with the Saturn and Scorpio, a lot of drama. And the moment, you know, I started thinking about this. I said, why is this happening? And then I always want to come to the soul level. And I think, and I think, and I ponder, and I go within. And I come to the soul level, and I just see it that, you know, when you're all knowing, and you feel things, and you know things, and you just know that everyone receives guidance on their own level. But this guidance won't always be like your guidance, pioneers. You will have different knowing. It's not higher or lower. It's more expanded. As a pioneering soul, you have a broader vision of things. So people might interpret their reality in a different way and let them. You have to let them because they cannot see it as you do, you know, and we won't ever understand people who will think differently. We cannot understand because the mind cannot. We can just love them. We can have compassion and we can love everyone as they are. Because a lot of the souls on this planet is firstly discovering that they can be free. That, they, that the shadow isn't something bad or scary. You know, a lot of the people are just starting to discover this. And it's not easy for some of them. And we have to be here to hold the space and tell them that it's not scary. And the moment you will judge yourself for your shadow self, that's pe people who judge others are people who judge their own shadow self. And these are people who have high spiritual ego, who will not let anyone tell them anything. And they're always right. And I know a few people like that. And they're always right. And they never progress. What's the whole point of it? Your soul is meant to progress. We all grow. I've heard people even say, oh, I'm in such a good place in my life right now. I don't even think I have anything else to learn. I don't think I think I've done, done everything. I'm like, yeah, do you really think so? Because the whole creation keeps expanding. We all expand. We eternally grow and evolve. So the moment you say that, that's your ego telling you, you know, you're, you're, you're here and you're on a pedestal and there's no one else who can be. You know, even I'm learning still. Conscious, constantly remembering what I already know, but constantly learning as well, because this is a new experience for me. Oh, earth, it's dense, it's weird, it's new. Wow, new experience. You know, I can I can improve my loving service even more in the, the, deepest, the deepest of densities. I can rise even to the highest aspects of light. That is my challenge here, to improve my service, to keep improving it. Everything always enhances. Sometimes it might happen that you will be drawn that some people will try to draw you in their vortex just pull you in because what they're experiencing in their life this just happened to me recently there was this married couple and they try to pull me in their drama and I'm like no way i'm not playing this game and they thought it was my fault but basically they both sought me out you know they both wrote to me they both sought my energy out i'm like 
I was just there. I didn't even do anything. I just replied to, you know, their emails in a nice way, just speaking my truth. And I'm thinking, you know, they don't know because they have problems. Problems. They're not problems, but just challenges, things that didn't yet come to light. And like I say, people oftentimes lie to themselves. And I wish them all the love and blessings, but you can only experience true source love when you see the truth. No sooner or later. When you're still in denial, you won't experience that beautiful source, pure love. Because only purity can, you know, cause that love to come through purity. So here's the thing, you know, I was observing this and I was thinking, yeah, I got to share this with people because many of you might be experiencing the same. People will try to take that purity and they, they, will, they will use you a lot of the times an excuse for something that's going bad in their own lives, that they still judge or don't like or something comes up to surface. Because when you're pure and when you just serve as that light embodiment, sometimes you will invoke the harshest things to come out. And I've talked to my community of light servers and they all express the same thing. They all say the same thing. They all say, ah, oh, people always hated it. You know, when I was just speaking that beautiful truth of the divine and they, they didn't like it or they, they treated me in this and that kind of way. But who cares? We're not here to make allies or friends or to people for like for liking us. We love ourselves. We are the pioneers. We know who we are. It's up for us to just stand our ground, to be in our own power so that others can remember as well. And that's all we have to do, to hold that frequency, hold the light. The underworld is resurfacing. There's going to be a lot of drama, not just from the people in their personal relationships. And they're trying to pull you in them because they, they basically need that light. But also in the global uh, scheme, things are being purified. So seemingly there might be chaos. But in the grander scheme of things, all is good. It it's just takes time. It unveils. Things are shifting. And um, like I say, a lot of the times people will say, oh, I feel so drawn to you. I feel a soul connection. And the answer I got from Spirit last week was that people often confuse soul connection with being guided, um, being connected, uh, being drawn to someone's light. Because the light is just naturally, you know, it's drawn. People are drawn to it and they think, oh, then I'm connected to someone via soul level. It's not always like that. People confuse that. The only truth that will ever be will be the truth that will come naturally on itself because the truth knows its source. So truth will always be revealed no matter what. But you will have to be really honest with yourself. You will have to stand in the field of neutrality, not looking to either opposites and even seeing them as opposites. You have to see them as the blended mix of all that is. And in that way, truth will always, you know, show up. Truth will always be presented. It was like this in my life because I was so firmly standing in my truth. And ever since I was a little girl, I was always the truth lover. And asked my mom, she said, you were always the truth nagger and lover and ah, kind of annoying sometimes. But I was. This was me. And this is me. This is my eternal beingness. And uh, because you are this way, you naturally cause for the energy of truth to cause what is untrue to come out. So people might not always like it and they not not always uh, want to be in your presence but that's okay because you didn't come here to like I say hang out with people and them for loving you for for telling them what they want to hear you came here to speak the truth the divine word that's how it's called so uh, in all this era that awaits us that is already here I'm wishing you many moments of self-discovery we still have things deep within us and the moment we put our power externally and think it's about other person it's about other event it's another external reality we miss it we miss the point so if you live a harmonious life and life mirrors that back at you you are harmonious because now the energies are matching inner outer is balancing itself out and it's equalizing but the moment you see people who experience chaos in their own lives, who still, you know, just lying to themselves in denial, you will see that these people can't tell you things neutrally because they first have to come to their neutrality themselves. My beloved pioneers, I hope this video assisted you in a way that you provide service to humanity as well. And this is the point of this video because I am speaking to you, pioneers. You are the light servers. You are the strong embodiments of truth and love. And it is important for you to bring that light now to the planet to the fullest. Not, eh, you know, maybe I will, maybe I won't. I'm still afraid to show my true light. No, now is the time to shine. There was never a better chance and better time than now. You go for it. <laughs> you have my full support and the community of Essential Pioneers fully supports you as well. You're welcome there with a loving embrace. I'll talk to you soon. Stay love, be love, you are love. Bye.